maintenance jobs in Australia? Well, Qantas have always maintained their aircraft in Australia since they started, and uh, um, up until about 20 years ago, there was only the occasional aircraft that went offshore and they couldn't fit into an Australian facility. So their fleet is being renewed as you would expect it to. I mean, 747s will not fly forever. But the new aircraft will also fly. The new aircraft will also have to be safe and maintained. And with the growth in aviation, you would expect there would be a, a similar growth to the number of people required to maintain those aircraft. Well, Singapore Airlines is a very highly regarded uh, airline in our part of the world. Um, what do you say to people who might suggest that their maintenance and repair facilities are equally as good as ours? Yeah, the Singaporean facilities, there's three of them, and they've been expanded upon in our submission, have made uh, gross errors on Qantas aircraft. And uh, if I was asked a question, which I think you're getting to, are Singapore Airlines safe? Why don't they have problems? Well, uh, what happens with the overseas maintenance facilities? They might have um, four or five lines of maintenance, so four or five aircraft at once having their maintenance being undertaken. They'll send their A-team to the Singapore Airlines aircraft. The next aircraft might be Singapore as well. They'll send the next group there. By the time they get to the air aircraft that are a competitor aircraft, they're not sending the uh, A-teams out there, they're sending the, the X-teams. So Sorry. just to be very clear, you're saying there's a pecking order in how work is allocated, that they'll look after their name brand Singapore yep. Airlines first, yep. and perhaps Silk Air or whoever, and then yep. they'll do the contract work. Yeah, so they're more senior and experienced people will go out and service the aircraft that are, are linked to the maintenance facility. Chairman, as a point of clarification, um, if I may, Senator Gallagher, that's a, with respect, that's a very, very serious allegation, isn't it? A very serious allegation. I mean, I know Singapore well. I've had an office in Singapore. I've done business in Singapore. I've got family members who live there. And I know Singaporean standards. And I've read with interest the account you've given on the two aircraft. And I've, I would ask you to actually provide to the committee on notice substantiation of that, because that's the sort of thing that I will challenge in yep. Singapore. Yep. I will challenge Singaporean authorities yep. to defend the evidence you have given us. Yep. And I'd like to actually have your documentation before I do that. So if I could, I'd be yep. appreciative of that. Thanks, Jim. Did you wish, Senator, uh, Senator Venus? I've just gave you a devotion. Sorry, <laughs> Mr. Fabrinus, Did you want? Did you wish to add anything to uh, Senator Bass? Yeah, I remember. I remember um, you're, you're talking about Singapore and things, and uh, you think it's a very serious allegation. I remember about four or five years ago, I sat before a Senate inquiry, and um, I made uh, something probably that was a lot more shocking back then, and that was that in Singapore they were using day-release prisoners from Changi to come out and work the aircraft as, uh, as maintenance was being undertaken. So uh, I make these statements um, with full knowledge and understanding of what I'm talking about, and post those sta statements I was challenged to make them outside of the parliamentary pr privilege, and I made them again, and, um, and they were ultimately not denied. Sure. Just, just based on the quality of your submission and its appendices, I'm asking you to actually document it. I don't yep. care whether you go outside and yep. say it. That doesn't interest me. Yep. What interests me is that I want to know that yep. when I go and challenge the Singaporeans. Sure. Okay, Senator Gallagher. Yeah. So, Mr. Vervinus, is there a, um, we, we have a fleet of aircraft which is evolving, and as you've said, there's uh, some work that's been done offshore, which in your organisation view is not as uh, not as a high standard as has been done in Australia. Yeah. So, and I gather from your submission there have been a closure of how many bases in Australia? So, uh, if I go back to 2006, there was four heavy maintenance facilities that Qantas used in Australia. Brisbane, Sydney, Melbourne and Avalon. And uh, as of today, uh, there are two left, Brisbane and Avalon, but Avalon serviced their very last aircraft yesterday, so those people are just doing their paperwork and they're going to be out of the place within a week or so. We will be left with one heavy maintenance facility in Australia left to undertake the maintenance on the entire Qantas fleet. Now, at the moment, the guys there are working thousands of hours overtime every week just to keep up the work that they do have. There are not enough staff employed in the facility to maintain Qantas's fleet, and uh, the entire A380 fleet are now being serviced in Manila. The 747s are going to go up to Haco and Hong Kong for their first two checks, and we don't know where beyond then. So in terms of the holder of the aircraft operating certificate, uh, and there is a requirement there to make sure that 
the human material and financial yep. wherewithal is there to ensure yep. safe uh, safety of the travelling public in Australia. And I think there's perhaps 48 million passengers a year in Australia. Yep. What, what is the picture your organisation sees here? The aircraft operator certificate holder is paid by Qantas. But isn't the aircraft operating certificate holder the CEO? I uh, think the AOC holder may be a gentleman called Lyle Stramby, mm -hmm. who is uh, one or two levels below the CEO. I'm not, but, and they've recently done some splitting of their business too, so they may have also split CEOs between a couple, uh, the AOCs between a couple of people. <coughs> So uh, what is the committee to take from uh, your submission and your evidence here today? Is the, uh, uh, in your organisation's view, is the travelling public more at risk or less at risk? I say that the travelling public are being put at risk by decisions made by Qantas Senior Management to offshore more maintenance. Finance, finances are coming before safety. So that implies that offshore maintenance centres uh, are delinquent in... in servicing to the level of the manufacturer's specification. Yeah, I, I say and have provided pr plenty of ev evidence within our submission that says that uh, the maintenance carried out offshore is uh, inadequate in uh, many parts, and including including a submission drawn from Qantas' own quality assurance report that essentially says that they should seriously reconsider using this one particular Singaporean facility ever again. So those claims that you have in that submission, yeah. how far do they go back? They're over a period of, uh, um, I think the earliest claim goes back to, I, I guess if you could talk about uh, OEC and OED, which are two aircraft that were bought by Qantas 747s and had massive cracks through them, they go back to their previous maintenance checks in Malaysia in 1998. Massive cracks that were found in an Australian facility in 2003, and the maintenance uh, the maintenance data that we've provided probably goes all the way up until about 2012. In 2012, Qantas made a decision that when they send an aircraft overseas, they used to send about six Qantas licensed aircraft engineers to witness everything and make sure everything was going smoothly. Uh, they decided in 2000 and, uh, 2012 that they were going to no longer send licensed aircraft engineers overseas to see what happened. And uh, we, uh, we think it was probably primarily so that they could save money on not, not sending six people away, but okay. uh, also secondary for that. It, it, it prevents us finding out information. Well, and, and I'm so just on. interested to you know. Clarification, Sean, yeah, just, yeah. just on, on, on this. With, with Jetstar's overseas operations that are wholly owned by Qantas, do they have their own maintenance staff set up you know, in offshore? With, okay. with, the, with the Jetstar offshore franchises, that they have line maintenance, which is the daily uh, kick the tyres, top up the engine oil, and they, they are, uh, occur wherever the aircraft lands. But the heavy maintenance on the majority of those uh, aircraft is undertaken in Singapore. So, is, just for clarification, and thanks for the indulgence, Senator Gallagher, uh, Virgin, obviously, uh, yep. where does it do all of its heavy maintenance? The majority of Virgin's heavy maintenance is done in New Zealand. So, not in Australia? No, not in Australia, it's done in New Zealand. And is there any of uh, Virgin's heavy maintenance done in? Uh, Asia? No, not to my knowledge. They have had some, uh, some of their Embraer aircraft had heavy maintenance in Portugal. So Asia's no good for maintenance, but New Zealand is? Uh, yeah, there's, uh, there's not been the same issues that uh, have been uh, reported from Asian facilities as has come in out it, of New Zealand. Mr Bavinas, it's, it's, it's a little difficult not to hear a dog whistle in here. Yeah. I never heard nothing. In what sense? I don't even understand what you mean. Well, it's, it's, it seems to be quite prejudicial. You're saying that you know, some of the most sophisticated engineering countries in the world aren't capable of carrying out aircraft maintenance. Well, I'm not sure if you would have a full understanding of how sophisticated the engineering facilities are, uh, in Asian facilities are. Well, I've, provided, I've provided enough evidence to say that it may just, just as well not be. I think be. what Robson was saying, a lot of the best cars in the world are, yeah. are built and maintained by Asians. These are not cars, mate. You can't pull no, them over at the side the, of the road the, if the, something the goes quality, wrong. The best quality cars in the world are made by Asians in, in Asian countries with Asian Some of the leading technologies. I'd well, 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 suggest that the best quality cars are made in Germany where people take pride in their work as Lufthansa do so their aircraft Asians well. don't take pride in their work. Is that what I'm reading? No, I didn't say that. I said I'm not doing it. I mean, it's, it's, it's an extreme dog whistle. Yeah. Well, I've provided enough evidence well, in there, Senator. I, I think that Mr. Pavanis has made a submission. I was just going to the submission uh, just to put on the record that their organisation, I don't ask anybody to agree with them, 
has identified some deficiencies in maintenance of Qantas aircraft. And the importance of that to the travelling public of Australia is that we do need to have you know, confidence and an understanding that wherever the maintenance has been done, it's been done to a proper high professional standard. The contention standard. is we should have it done in Germany because they're the best at it. No, it wasn't. It's in the well, not really sure where that's going. Mr. Chair, can you interrupt questions? Yes. Sorry? Sorry? No, we are back. I've just given the call to Senator Gallagher. I just said Senator Edwards is verbally. Yes. Senator Gallagher. The, uh, the situation is we're now having one uh, heavy maintenance facility in Australia. That's correct. In 2006, we've reduced from 12, four, four from four to one. Uh, is there any chance of winning work in this part of the world for that facility? Uh, there's no capacity within the Brisbane facility to fit any more work in. In fact, they can't even fit all the Qantas work in. So it's not able to sort of uh, repair Singapore Airlines planes because it's full of Qantas? No, but uh, the hangar that Qantas vacated in Sydney in 2006, hangar 245, has been uh, sitting there empty ever since. So if work was to be won from another carrier, or even if they were to win back some of the Qantas work, there are hangars in Australia that can do it. Is this an ideological shift within management to just not do maintenance uh, within the main stream company called Qantas? I, sus I suspect it. I'm having trouble hearing Senator Gallagher. Did you say ideological? Did you? Yes, I did. Yeah, I suspect it may be, but I can't, I can't um, speak on their behalf. No, no worries. Thanks for that, Chair. Senator Adams. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you for your submission. I noted that um, I was just um, working to understand um, some aspects of it, and.